Evaluation of a tilt and tumble FACO. This is submitted by an anonymous surgeon. So let's watch the case here. There's a good fill of the anterior chamber with viscoelastic. Here comes the main incision. That looks pretty good. Nice ton of length entering the anterior chamber now. I like the incision. Looks good. Now it's time for a capsulorexis. Again, that looks pretty good. Nice round and generous capsulorexis. Aiming for about five to five and a half millimeters, and that looks just about perfect. Remember, for this technique of tilt and tumble, or bringing the nucleus halfway out of the capsular bag, we do want to have a sufficiently large capsular axis. So here's some hydrodissection, good fluid wave going behind. And let's go in an opposite direction. And this uh, doctor is going to do a little more hydrodissection. There's the nucleus partially out of the bag. And you can help lift the nucleus as well as done there. And this is a classic tilt and tumble technique as described by Dr. Lindstrom uh, many years ago. We've shown videos of this here on Cataract Coach. For a relatively soft nucleus, it's extremely efficient. I think the video we showed here, we certainly had a sub five minute case. And uh, tilt and tumble definitely works well for a soft lens. Here's some dispersive viscoelastic going on top of the cornea and now being squirted with some balanced salt solution, and that'll help keep the surface of the eye nice and wet, and you don't have to squirt as many times. Here comes the FACO probe. Now for tilt and tumble for this technique, you definitely want a high flow and a high vacuum. So that's at least 30, 35 cc's a minute, maybe even 40 cc's a minute, and a vacuum of at least 300 millimeters of mercury, even four to 500 be better. And the idea behind it is, the part of the nucleus that is tilted out of the capsular bag can simply be emulsified using the FACO probe in this high vacuum. And so here, just digging into it, making a little bit of a, a groove there, even if you will. And then now that nucleus is tilted up like this, you can, if you want, split the nucleus a little bit more, or you can just keep wolfing it down. And so the preference here for me is just to bring it up like that, tilt it even more, and just keep aspirating. So tilting it out of the bag and then tumbling. Tumbling meaning just bringing the, all the pieces of the nucleus towards the uh, FACO probe. And so the chopper hand is gonna do a lot of delivering of the nucleus and keeping it in front of the FACO probe. Remember the goal here is to keep the nucleus in front of the FACO probe and not all just underneath the FACO probe. So even here, I'd recommend pull back the phaco probe a little bit. Don't operate near the nasal angle of the eye. Operate more in the center of the cornea, center of the anterior chamber. Also, look how that chopper keeps hitting the speculum. You need to adjust that. You need to adjust your speculum, use a different speculum, change the positioning of your instruments, but you shouldn't have that chopper throughout the case hitting your speculum, rubbing on the speculum. That's not ideal. You don't want that. And so here, the reason why the, the nucleus isn't tumbling in so easily is part of it's the settings. You need to have a higher flow rate here. And you can tell the very slow leakage out of the incision means it's a relatively low flow. The other thing you want to do here is you want to adjust the tip of the phaco probe so you're keeping it near the lens of material. This is a peristaltic pump. If you're not occluding the phaco tip, you're not going to achieve high vacuum. And the name of the game here, tilt and tumble, to remove the nucleus is achieving high vacuum. That means occlusion. Got to keep the phaco tip occluded. So about half the nucleus is gone. The second half comes out a lot easier because there's more working room. And you can keep feeding it in there. So pretty good technique here. Couple points of recommendation. Number one, let's adjust your phaco settings. Show me a higher flow rate, at least 35 cc's a minute. Make sure your infusion rate or your infusion pressure bottle height is commensurate with that level. Keep the vacuum high at about 400 millimeters of mercury. And make sure you're occluding the phaco tip with lens material to achieve the high vacuum. Otherwise, you'll never achieve the high vacuum. And then use the chopper to keep the pieces in front of the phaco tip. So here's the phaco tip going back in the eye. Looks like some additional tetracaine was put on the eye during that little break. And again, let's get that chopper in the eye. Here we go. 
he adjusts that speculum. That's another very important piece. Look how the, the chopper keeps hitting the speculum. We want to avoid that situation. So switch to a different speculum. Now you know why I use my design speculum, which sits nasally, since I operate temporally most often. And so you want to change the speculum or its position or the position of your incisions in order to avoid hitting it. Because that's really not ideal. Here comes the last of the nucleus. It's coming out okay. So in this case, you may end up with some coronal edema. Prolonged phaco time, operating a little bit too close to this, the corneal endothelium, and putting a lot more fluid as well as phaco energy in the eye, more than probably needed. So good job so far. You're obviously making good progress. We're happy to feature your videos. But try our suggestions. Take those to heart and let me know if that improves the technique at all. And again, if you're going to do phaco tilt and tumble, remember we reserve this for the softer lens nuclei. So in general, 2 plus nuclear sclerosis or less is ideal for the tilt and tumble check technique. Here we are at the end. Let's just zoom to the very last part of the case. There's the eye well in the capsule bag. That looks great. And it's time to seal up the incision. So that's a monofocal, aspheric, single piece acrylic lens. Looks like a technus uh, lens. Everything looks great. So thanks for submitting the video. You can have your video submitted too. Go to cataractcoach.com. Click on the link for submit your video. And it can be anonymous like this. And you'll get honest to goodness feedback and helpful advice to make you a better surgeon. Thanks for watching.